nerd dice. Welcome to the Stateless Codecast. This is the 35th episode in our series NerdDice.com, where we build a Ruby on Rails 7 application to manage tabletop role-playing games. And we have a um, some alerts in our uh, related to the the gems that are um, like the dependencies for our Ruby on Rails application that show up in Dependabot alerts. So if we go, I'll go back to the main page here. Uh, security click on that tab there uh, and then there's a section dependabot alerts that uh, was previously I hadn't yet enabled on this project uh, but I enabled it probably last week sometime uh, and you can go and view the dependabot alerts for that so most of the time it's just a matter of um, running bundle update to uh, to update to the the latest version of the gem and that's what we're going to do here um, and we're um, uh, if, if you're in production maybe you want to exercise a bit more granularity uh, in terms of how you update uh, we'll, we'll certainly whenever you update your bundle you want to rerun your gems if uh, any of your Rubocop gems uh, update rerun Rubocop potentially it involves some code fixes uh, but then I think once we uh, push and merge this into the um, the main branch then we will um, I think github will detect that we've got the requisite versions in our gem file dot lock to clear these alerts and auto clear them so that's what we're hoping to do here um, the, the security section here too I'm gonna um, add probably a backlog item I'm not gonna tackle it urgently because we, we're not in production and um, whatnot but we probably do since we've got a contributing section and some of that other stuff add a security policy for the app so I'll just add a backlog item for that something to tackle before we actually release it um, or as time permits, uh, as backlog permits, at least have it there uh, to consider. It's more important in uh, if you've got a gem that other people are using. So uh, what I probably will do is um, go into uh, one of the upcoming videos on the Nerd Dice gem. I will probably add an item to create a security policy for that because there may be people who depend upon it and um, need to be alerted or um, provide information about uh, security issues and whatnot. For this one, like if somebody opens an issue and like, hey, you're using a version of one of these gems that's um, vulnerable to a regular expression denial of service or something like that, um, then, then we'll just deal with it kind of out in the open um, but there are times if there's like a sensitive security thing that's discovered where you want to have um, a security policy in place you just can't do everything all at once so let's take a look now in our application this is our current gem file dot lock you can see we're running rails 7.0.4 which is vulnerable here if you go to ruby on rails you can see that the latest version is 7.0.4.2 uh, 7.0.4.1 is the one that um, resolved all the security issues that were in place uh, 7.0.4.2 is a, is a like bug fix version based on stuff that occurred in um, version 7.0.4.1 so uh, I'm fine with obviously I don't have a an app in progress or anything like that uh, in, in production so um, I'm planning on updating just doing a blanket bundle update which will take us to the latest version allowed by our um, our gem file which is not yet constrained we do have a uh, set version constraints before releasing to production um, note like draft issue 
um, and it's that's probably yeah um, I don't know how I'd prioritize those it's probably security policy is higher right now but then we go in and we should be able to from our command line and in the event that something breaks what we're gonna do the install run our full test suite including our system tests and then we're going to or probably we'll run rubocop first and then do our full system, uh, test suite uh, and then if everything works and everything passes do a quick um, um, I mean the, everything we have pretty much is now is covered by system tests so um, I don't think we even need to do a an in-app regression test or anything with this so um, so get status get checkout B we'll call it pendabot slash rails seven o four two Are on our new branch now we can just run bundle update you can see many of our gems including um, Lufa and some of those other things um, were updated rail Rails is up to 7.0.4.2. Uh, we did get new RuboCop cops, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, and then, all right, so we'll give this a shot. Oh, the cops. Redundant regex. Empty line before assert methods. I will pause for a moment and look through some of these new offenses and decide what to do with them. All right, and so I've taken a look at these. Most of these seem reasonable. The, the chief among them is the um, the new standard of um, empty line before assertion. So let's take a look at one of these offenses, change email test. Line 35. And I'm doing that most of the time anyway, so I, I like that style. Um, hopefully it doesn't take me over the, uh, the line length uh, cop. That, that it's just like a cop to bust you like that. Um, so we'll attempt uh, one more thing here is the uh, redundant escape in a regular expression. I think that's good having the, uh, the regular expression um, be as lean as possible without redundant escapes is good. So we'll give it a shot. Our autocorrect. And hopefully we're down to one. We are down to one and that's just a top level documentation comment, um, which I'm surprised that didn't get picked up before now, but um, we'll do that in an application mailer. I look at that test helper. Change to the the email. 
that was the the hyphen is redundant there so anyway application mailer I will just pause and write a quick documentation comment here all right I've got my application mailer class documentation comment let me just make sure that I'm doing this consistently with I'm not doing the the top and bottom line things there we will be consistent set the comment like that now we'll rerun RuboCop. Hopefully we'll be able to get paroled. We have been. And now we're going to run our full test suite here. Running t Rails test system test. Um, I will pause and let this just run. And I'll be back when it's done. All right, everything is passing for both the, the normal uh, tests and the, the system tests. So we can take a look at our git status now. It's a good time to review our diff. Sorry about that, I had a bit of a coughing fit. And we can see our gem file lock upgraded most of the uh, essentially everything in rails as well as the other available things bootsnap capybara concurrent ruby date debug so looks like some of the dependencies of dependencies changed a bit but nothing that appears to be earth shattering as evidenced by the passing tests. And then we see a bunch of those are documentation comment. And then um, I don't think I mentioned that redundant uh, constant um, Uh, delineation there uh, Rubocop has gotten rid of and we've got a lot of just add a blank line for style and presentation readability purposes this is our change to the the email regular expression and that's it so now well it will Add the whole directory and we will commit our code. I'll pause and write my message. All right, I've got my commit message here. I will close it, close some of these files here. attempt to push to this branch. Take a look at what happens with our dependabot alerts when this kicks off. Still showing is open, but we haven't merged the pull request yet. So hopefully, uh, once that gets done, it will auto close a bunch of these. 
I'll pause and allow the build to complete. Oh, the build failed. Let's see what happened here. X state be closed snip Ruby bundle install failed maybe close handle on exit just gonna try rerunning The job and see if it continues to if it was just a one-off fluke type of thing I'll pause and let this finish all right so here's the culprit here it says downloading debug revealed dependencies not in the API or lock file um, IRB uh, and Reline there. So um, those are failing there. So we can try doing dash dash full index, which I will attempt to do on the GitHub action. Set up Ruby. All right, so there's probably an option for set up Ruby that allows me to change how we do the bundler cache there. I will take a look at the Ruby setup Ruby. All right, so taking a look at the Ruby setup Ruby, um, I'm thinking that it's actually, so this these need to get into the, um, the gem file dot lock there. So I'm gonna try running uh, bundle install dash dash full dash index and see if that changes my I kept everything the same let's do bundle update see anything here different nothing is different but so downloading it to be revealed the dependencies. I'll take a look at that debug gem on Ruby gems. One point seven point one runtime dependencies IRB and reline which are not in my gemfile.lock for some reason. So 
debug 1.7.1. itself looks like a top level gem in the gem file groups development and test Gonna throw in C. Let's do a bundle update full index. See if that's get the gets those into our gemfile.lock and then hopefully that will resolve the issue and allow our github action to build. Our bundle is updated, get status, get diff, IRB requires reline, so let's see if we can get that. Do another bundle update. Let's see where we, where we are in terms of Still pull in, reline. I think we're good there, so we'll do a git commit. Get git commit amend sign. modify my commit message to note that the um, IRB was added and, and the bundle updated uh, in order to make the GitHub actions pass. All right, I've got the, the second iteration of my commit message. We will now force push to our branch and see if our app is able to build successfully. The, the other potential problem I anticipate here is that um, the, the reline uh, gem there, I, I believe we need to install, have make sure that lib uh, readline is um, installed on the system in order for that to um, succeed. Well, no. An alternative read line implementation by pure Ruby. So maybe it doesn't require the dependency. We will see. I'll pause the, um, well, see how things are going. Yeah, I'll pause and we'll see how it goes. All right, this still failed, and I don't want to spend any further time chasing it down. It failed with the same problem even after having IRV and Reline in the, uh, the file there. So I'm going to take a look at my current gemfile.lock. A 
pessimistic version constraint. That's so strange. It was. Yeah, there's something weird going on here. Anyway, I'm for now going to make a pessimistic version constraint on this and see if that solves our problem. So back in our gem file. Little Waka here. Remove IRB. Do another bundle update. Get diff. Yeah, that's picking up the, it's a bug and debug that it's not listing the dependencies there in the gemfile.lock when it installs. Very strange. Anyway, you can see there that the debug 1.7.1 when you were installing it was not disclosing um, the IRB and reline dependencies that were there. Um, so back in 1.6.3 now three, um, seems to solve that issue. So get status, get add, get commit. Sign. So now just note here, I'll uh, I was pausing, finish my sentence. All right, I've got my revised commit message here. We will try once again to force push. While we're force pushing, I'm gonna take a look and see if this has been reported on debugs. Page at all. One point six point three fails to install dependencies. So this is Yeah, this looks to be the exact issue. We'll see what happened in our action. Still running, so. Um, I will 
pause and hopefully allow this to complete. Yay, we're green. Okay, so let's take a look at the security. Those are still around. We're now that we have a passing build, should be able to open our pull request into main. check and make sure that I signed my commit properly. I did. Copy the branch name. Merge. Push. old branch, delete the old remote branch, now let's see what happens to our security alerts, they are now closed, which is what we want go into our issue, probably label this technical excellence, sign myself, I might have to do that on the previous issue as well, uh, and then we'll say is completed. Well, that was more than I bargained for. I was thinking this was going to be a five minute video. Lo and behold, it turned out to be a uh, dependency nightmare. Sometimes that happens when you update your bundle. Things that you don't anticipate needing to fix. Uh, weird things. I've, I don't think I've ever seen the like the dependencies are showing on Ruby gems. I don't think I've ever seen that issue occurred before, but um, I will offline comment on that item and um, provide kind of some of my steps for it. And hopefully if you're lost on the internet, trying to find a resolution to the debug uh, version of the gem, not caught breaking your, GitHub Actions, hopefully you found us and this has been of help to you. We'll see you in the, let me take a look at the, we'll see you in the retrospective. I'm going to do a retrospective next and then we'll start our next epic. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding, and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.